Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to finish up unit two by looking at one more item with scientific notation and this time is we're going to take numbers written in standard form and write them using scientific notation. So to write numbers in scientific notation you're going to have to again move the decimal and you're going to be moving the decimal point until to the left of the decimal is a whole number and that whole number just has to be from 1 to 10 but it has to be less than 10 so 9 technically so it has to be numbers 1 through 9 and that's including 9 so you can see in the example here we have 8600 well the decimal point would technically be back here with, with the zero but we need to get it so there's only a single digit to the left of the decimal. So that means we're going to move the decimal point one, two, three places. And that puts our decimal point between the eight and the six. So we can go ahead and put the eight and the six over here. And the zeros, anything to the right with zeros in this, we can just eliminate right now. So 8.6, and then scientific notation, since it's power of 10, times 10 to the we moved it one, two, three places. And that's where we get our exponent from. We moved the decimal three places, so we're gonna get our power of three. Same thing when you have a decimal, except you're gonna be going, instead of to the left, you're gonna be moving the decimal to the right. And you're gonna move it to the right until you get a whole number digit to the left of that decimal. And that digit has to be one to nine. So we move that decimal, one, nope, there's a zero to the left, whoops. One space, there's a zero to the left, two space, still a zero, sorry about this. One space, zero to the left. All right, let's try this again. One space, zero to the left, two spaces, zero to the left, three spaces, there's a two to the left. So the decimal's now between two and the four. So let's put that 2.4 over here. The rest of the zeros we could just leave out. So we have that 2 to the left of the decimal. We want to bring our point 4 along because the decimal points between 2 and the 4 times 10 because we're in a power of 10 with scientific notation. And we moved it 1, 2, 3 places. So it's the power of 3. But notice it's a negative 3. When we have a decimal and we're moving this to the right, the decimal to the right, it's going to give us a negative exponent. And that negative exponent indicates that you're going to have a decimal as your number. So let's go to some examples just to better see how we're writing these. So I'm going to bring up my pen. So we're going to start with the first one, 50,000. In this, our decimal point technically is right there. Most whole numbers, you don't write with a decimal, but that's where the decimal place would be at the end of that whole number. We need to move that decimal point so that this five is the only number to the left of that decimal. So to get from here to here, we count how many spaces we moved it. One, two, three, four. And now we have that whole number five times 10. And since we moved it four spaces times 10 to the fourth. So this number 50,000 written in scientific notation would read five times 10 to the fourth. Next one, currently the decimal place is back here. We need to move it so that it's right here between the two and the five so that the two is the only digit to the left of the decimal, which means we need to move that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So we're going to go ahead and put our 2.5. We're going to include our decimal now. Why did we include our decimal here and not here? It's because to the right of here, you just had zeros. To the right of the 2, then, you have another digit between one and nine. So you're gonna include that. So 2.5 times 10, and we moved it seven times, 10 to the seventh. 
This one, we're starting here. We want to get it between the 6 and the 8, so the 6 is the only thing to the left of the decimal. So we move it 1, 2 times. So the decimal now is between the 6 and the 8. So we've got 6, and we're going to include that 0.83 times 10. We moved it 1, 2 times, times 10 to the second. So let's look at decimals. We're going to try to get a digit to the left of the decimal that is between 1 and 9. So we're moving 1, 2, 3 spaces to right there. And you can see that to the left of this decimal, we have the 5. So we can go ahead and put the 5 here times 10. And we moved it 1, 2, 3 times. But we're not done yet. Because since it's a decimal, and we moved it to the right, we moved our decimal place to the right, that's going to give us a negative exponent. So with decimals, writing them in scientific notation, since you're moving it to the right, you're going to have negative exponents. Let's do this one. We want to move the decimal place to right here between the threes. That way there's just this one digit of three to the left of the decimal place. So we would move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. Let's bring that 3.3 down. So 3.3 times 10 to the not seventh, since it's a decimal and we're moving the place to the right, to the negative seventh. Let's do one last one. Again, we're going to move the decimal right there so that the 5 is to the left of the decimal. We move it 1, 2, 3, 4 places. Since the decimal point's there, we're going to write that as 5.06. Now, if that was all zeros to the right of it, we could leave all the zeros out. But since the 6 is here, we've got to include it. 5.06 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. And since we move to the right, it's a negative 4. So 5.06 times 10 to the negative fourth power. So at this point, go ahead and finish your homework. This is our last section I said for unit two. So in the coming days, we're gonna be getting ready for our unit test and then taking our unit test. Again, if you have any questions while doing your homework, rewatch the video. If you still have questions, then get a hold of me and I'll help you out. If not, and you have, a good, you have an easy time doing the homework, that's great. And we'll see you next time.